have there also been moments in, in your career, whether it was at ECG or Motorola and later at PepsiCo, where you learned the importance of a company acknowledging an individual's value? Um, company cultures we should talk about because companies are nothing but you know, a collection of people. Mm -hmm. So it's whether the people in the company are, uh, you know, acknowledge your values. But what's the culture of the company? There are companies where the culture is impersonal, where they look at people as tools of the trade. And then there are companies that look at people as assets, real assets for the, for the company. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, in BCG, Boston Consulting Group, mm -hmm. I was looked at as an asset. Most All the people in BCG are looked at as assets because consulting is nothing but people. Sure. Um, you know, then when I came to Motorola, you know, people like Chris Galvin looked at me as an asset. I mean, he really mentored me and treasured me, and so did Gerhard. I mean, Gerhard Schulmeier was like perhaps the single biggest force, single biggest mentor in my life who gave me the most tailwinds. Kind of wanted to go back to something which is uh, I thoroughly enjoy reading about and, and, and what you're doing. I call it the Indra Nui deep dive. Uh -huh. um, and that in itself is an exceptional exercise, which translates about, into how you, in particular, uh, roll up your sleeves and throw yourselves in and, and read everything and speak to everybody necessary uh, that is required to have a more thorough understanding of the subject matter. This is something that I feel a trait that was born in India and something which uh, held you in good stead when you went to America, uh, to Yale in particular. How does this ability that you have, which not very many people have, allow you to assimilate so much diverse thought and subject matter? I actually believe that skill is something that everybody has to have mm -hmm. because um, it doesn't matter whether you're the entry level person or a senior person, um, you have to understand the details of what you're being, you know, what's being put in front of you. Mm -hmm. Not because you don't trust your people. It's because you respect your people. You're signing something because you know what you're signing and you know that your people have done a good job. And the only way you know your people have done a good job is when you read it and realize that you understand what it's saying. So I honestly believe that we are in a world today which is changing so fast. Mm -hmm. And if you don't keep up with the changes and if you don't read and absorb and um, get up to speed on the details as much as the big picture, mm -hmm. you're actually going to be a pass through, which is just signing, sending papers, pretending you know something when you really don't know it. There's a great line that somebody told me, they said, the distance between a number one and number two is a constant. So if you want to lift an organization, the leader has to lift him or herself. Mm -hmm. The organization comes along. So I took that very seriously because I realized that if I wanted the organization to be a learning organization, to get into the details, to really improve their thinking, I'm going to have to show that I'm equally interested in doing all that. So, for example, when I go into a manufacturing plant for Tropicana, you know, I know so much about oranges and juice making. When I talk to the engineers on the line, they realize that there's a boss up there who really cares about what they're doing. Uh, when I talk to the R&D people, I will do a lot of pre-work, pre-reading before I go for a meeting with them. So they would say, they would always say to me, we have a friend in the C-suite, a friend who's a CEO because she cares about uh, R&D. Same thing with design, same thing with manufacturing, supply chain operations. I think it shows that you have respect for all these functions because you're really learning about it to be able to ask them insightful questions so that you can do your job better. And I go back to business schools, Ambika, I think design thinking, zooming in, zooming out. How do you create a company future back? How do you think about the future trends and work backwards? How do you create shapes when shapes don't exist? Mm. You know, I think it's all teachable, um, may not be fully teachable, you've got to have some innate skills, but I think they're somewhat teachable. I think we do that in business groups. So much of what you're speaking about is also incredibly intuitive. And, and I feel like uh, nourish, replenish, and cherish must have come out of that thought as well. I find it amazing 
you know, when you talk about it, of course, there's a ton of thought and, and a lot of taking on board what your various mentors and everything that you kind of assimilated like a sponge. Uh, that is what allowed you to get to where uh, you are. Yep. It's um, incredible to me that, that a lot of people actually do ignore that empathetic, intuitive side. And I wonder why, uh, given that everything that you're talking about makes complete and utter sense. It's, it's amazing to me that leaders choose to ignore that though. Um, do you think do you think that will change anytime soon, and especially in a country like India? I think that when the when the Almighty Buck wins over good sense and sensibilities, mm. you have extremely short term behavior, which is winning at all costs. People should run companies for the duration of the company, not the duration of the CEO. Understood. People should run it. And it's almost like the PL should have a line that says cost to society. Mm -hmm. And I always say to myself, you have to walk a mile in the shoes of other people. For example, have a plant, walk a mile in the shoes of that community. Pretend you're one of that community persons. Would you operate the plant the way you're, you're operating right now? I would tell PepsiCo people, when we make products, just imagine that every child in the world is your child. Hmm. what products would we feed them? That's how we have to change the portfolio. Just imagine that every backyard is a, uh, you know, a trash dump. What would you be upset was if it was in your trash dump? Almost everything. So why should we allow it to be put in somebody else's trash dump? Uh, and so I would constantly tell people to personalize the company, to personalize the issues. Don't be you know, sort of third part, third person, it's like say, oh, I'm not going to drink this stuff or eat this stuff, but it's okay if we sell it to others. Mm. Ask yourself the question, what would you drink and eat? What would you be proud to drink and eat? What would you be proud to have as the effluent stream coming out of the plant or waste coming out of the operations? Mm. That'll make you hold your head high and say, I work for a great company.